Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hi there! This is going to be another orchid diary video and I just noticed that the first one that I made was exactly one year ago in April 2017. And here we are again in April and I have so many things that I'd like to show you and I actually wanted to make separate videos for some of them but I just can't, I don't have time for so many videos so I decided to make an orchid diary instead. Enjoy! Here's the spike of my Banda Sorolescens and the last blooms are going to fade soon. But there is something I'd like to show you. A second spike has appeared. Here we are. Here's the second spike. And I'm so happy. Loads of fragrant blooms waiting inside this little spike. Last year there was a second one and it didn't do anything. It just stayed in the bin. Here's my psychopsis. Two more spikes in the background, but only one flower at the moment. And this bird, it's facing the wrong direction. I had to remove a couple of the lower leaves on my Aranthes grandiflora. And you might see that there is a spike forming. Let's see if I can find it. It's always difficult to navigate through the camera lens. Where am I? Here's the spike. And the other one, this one here, has become so long, almost at the window. And this is a poor plant, <laughs> a quite neglected fowl. It's dusty and leaning towards one side and there are so many burnt roots on the surface and I really, really want to repot it, but I haven't done it yet. I'm feeling so bad, but nevertheless, it started a new spike and an old one has branched and there are some birds appearing so it's doing okay but I think it would do way better in new medium. There are so many things on my list. And here's my Oncidium twinkle on my northern windowsill. It's doing quite well. There were some brownish, blackish leaf tips that I cut. You can see that many of the leaf tips have been cut. And at the moment, during the last couple of weeks, there were no new brownish leaf tips and that's, that's nice. I hope it's going to stop, but I think it's going to happen again and I'm just planning on cutting the leaf tips again because I think that's going to help prevent whatever it is, the fungus maybe, from spreading. And there are tons of new growths and they do have some difficulties. I hope you can see it. The one in the front here has problems to unfold properly. I'm trying to help them. I think I should be more diligent with keeping it moist during the next months. No root tips on my purple vanda at the moment. Although it had so many root tips last year in April. I know that the roots look very, very sad when not actively growing. But they are not dead and they become green whenever they are being watered. And it's growing elsewhere. Maybe that's the explanation for the lack of root growth at the moment. Let me see if I can show it to you. Here we are. It's a keiki. I don't know if I like that, but I will have to deal with it. And I've noticed it this week and it has become quite big already before I even noticed it. And do you see what I see on my dusty dendrobium berry? 
here's a new spike. Although the plant bloomed, I don't know when it bloomed. Was it in December, January, February? And now again in April. And it's exactly the same as last year. There was a little spike to my surprise. Really nice. And the plant is quite dehydrated. I must water it again. And here are two new plants that I'd like to include into this video. They are a bit dusty, a bit dehydrated, but they are quite healthy nevertheless. And they are Phalaenopsis leodoros, yes. <laughs> I have two new Phalaenopsis leodoros that a very kind orchid friend of mine gifted to me. She said, what? Your leodoro has died, I can't believe it. I do have two plants that I don't really like anymore. Do you want to have them? And I said, yes, of course I do, because this is a plant that I thought about rebuying anyway. So I was really, really lucky and I'm very thankful. And I also wanted to say thank you so much for your kind and supportive and encouraging comments under the video in which I showed the decay of my Phalaenopsis leodoro that I had over six years. Thank you so much. I've learned that Phalaenopsis leodoro is really expensive in Canada and the US and I really hope that prices will drop in the US and Canada at some point as well because I really like the scent of this orchid and I wish all of you could have one of them for a decent price. My other one I think I paid about five euros for it. It was on a discount but still very cheap. And here we have a little fell parade for those of you who like fells as much as I do. Let's start with Phalaenopsis princess Cayulani. Only two blooms, I think it had about four or five blooms at the same time of the year last year. That's a pity, but I won't start complaining about the dark winter in this video again. The color is intense as usual and the scent is pleasant, powdery. And down here... Isn't it cute? I can't get over it. It's Phalaenopsis perishi. It's so cute. And the scent is quite intense. Not too intense if you stick your nose into it, but a couple of meters away it happened that I smelled a scent and I wondered where is that sweet scent coming from? And it was Phalaenopsis perishi. And I wonder if I can show you that the lips are Mobile. I hope you could see that. I find it so cute. And the next one is this one. It's Phalaenopsis ambliaris or embolaris, a cross between Amboinensis and Cochlearis. And it's the first bloom. On this one I only had it for about six or seven months and it's not doing too well but the flower is beautiful in my eyes and up here the first flowers on Phalaenopsis cornu cervi or cervi and the other spikes are active as well the tips have become light green so I hope that they will produce many flowers very soon. And down here, that's Phalaenopsis ludemanniana, not hieroglyphica, it's ludemanniana and the flowers are really nice, quite big, but only two. I don't know if it had a few more, but not as many as last year, unfortunately. And these are fragrant, mm. one of my favorite fragrances. It's a very warm, comforting scent. We are beneath my tall vanda at the moment. And here's what I'd like to show you. Many active root tips. That's nice, isn't it? I always like the root tips of my little fragrant pink vanda because they are pink as well and 
can see loads of freckles. Don't you worry, it's not a fungus, it's only freckles. And what do we have here? Two spikes in the leaf axles. I don't know if they are going to make it. I hope they will both grow. The upper one seems to be growing actively. Please keep your fingers crossed. These are the roots of my Bresocatlia yellow bird. Aren't they pretty? And out there on the balcony, that's my Cattleya pink jaguar. It's not the perfect place. I will see if I will find a better place for it. And who needs roots growing horizontally into the room? Here's the little backup plant of my yellow Leleucatlia in bird. It's always funny when roots are breaking through old roots like this. Or like this on my wrinkle van I call Marie. And this is something else I could have made a complete video on, but I didn't. It's my Rinko van der Colmery that spent the whole winter bare-rooted. That means without this holy clay pot. When I freed it from this holy clay pot, I removed many roots. And it suffered a bit this winter because bare-rooted means I have to water more often compared to when it's in a clay pot with coconut fibers as it used to. So it lost a couple of its leaves, the bottom leaves down here. Doesn't look really nice. I thought about shortening the stem down here where there are only a few roots left but no leaves anymore. But I didn't because all the roots are becoming active again <laughs> and I thought no it wouldn't make sense to cut them off just for aesthetic reasons so I decided to keep all of them and keep the bare stem and it's also my fault because I should have watered more often. I tried to keep up with the watering but I didn't really succeed. Yeah, Now that I have active root growth again I have to make a decision and I decided to pot it in this clay pot again. And I have these stakes for stabilization and yeah, I'm not finished yet. I have some coconut fibers soaking in a bucket of water and I think I will fill this one up and maybe wrap some coconut fiber around some of the roots. And now we are back to the roots, so to say, back to the original set up and down here are some tools that I always use it's my Falco 2 this one it's really handy when I cut stems or big roots and this is my Leatherman Wave it's a multi-tool these are the two tools I really, really like. And for those of you who are interested, you will find the link in the description box. I'm quite sure I will have missed something but I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that your plants are doing very well. Until next time, happy growing! Bye bye! <laughs>